Today I'm doing part two of Lost and Found. Part two of it. And uh, my subtitle is The Lost Coin. Lost Coin. Last week we talked about lost sheep. And today we talk about lost coin. So we go back to Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, and verses 8 to 10. Luke chapter 15, verses 8 to 10. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace of which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This parable carries a similar message as the parable of the lost sheep. Uh, in this parable, however, we see escalation on two points. <clears throat> First, we see that as important as one sheep is, when it is compared with 99, the loss of one coin compared to 10 seems to have a greater import than 1 over uh, 99. So there, this parable takes it a little higher. And also, although it's a, very, it's a shorter uh, parable, there is greater detail in this one than in the first one of the lost sheep, and we will cover all of that uh, today. So, the passage talks about a woman who has lost a silver coin. A silver coin literally uh, means a piece of silver. And the woman uh, that is envisaged in this parable is a very poor woman. She doesn't have much. And the reason is because the Greek silver coin, which Jesus is referencing here, uh, was, didn't have much value. It was small in size and small in value. It didn't have so much value. It was a very, uh, to a very large extent, an insignificant amount of money. In the Greek, it is called a drachme. And the drachme will weigh about four grams of silver. And I took the liberty to check in current terms uh, how much a gram of silver would weigh and uh, will cost. And in today's terms, a gram of silver will be about three U.S. dollars. That in Ghana, depending on the state of the city, would be about 36 cities per coin. So, the silver coin, if we were, she was a Ghanaian, would be about something worth 36 cities. And she had 10 of them, that's about 360 uh, cities, or, or probably $30. Now, that seems like a lot of money to some people, but it's not a lot of money. Because that coin, or those 10 coins, represented her life savings. This is all that she has. This is what she has worked so hard and has gathered over the years that she's been alive. And she's been able to manage to, to gather ten pieces of silver. Ten silver coins. Now, for most of you, that will not be a lot of money. But you know, if that is all you have, that's your whole livelihood. And losing one is losing a lot. Not simply in terms of the value of the coin, but in terms of its relationship or its value to you. For this woman, losing that one coin was a lot of money lost. And the passage says that she lost one coin. And the word lost in the context that it is used here uh, means to fall out of place. 
it fell out of place. Uh, people have speculated uh, as to where the coin was. Some people feel that the coin was uh, around her neck as a necklace. Some believe that it was part of a head covering. Uh, some also believe it was stored somewhere. I, I tend to believe that it was not a necklace or around the neck or the head, but it was stored somewhere. Because if it is around the neck, you can't just lose one. If you lose so many of them, will fall down. You will lose almost all of them at the same time. So she has preserved these uh, ten coins uh, in a place of safety. But she lost them. One of them fell out of place. And she didn't have uh, them any longer. Now, the difference between the lost sheep and the lost coin is that the sheep wandered away. The sheep moved away, went astray. But a coin doesn't have a mind. A coin uh, just was lost. And you can't tell whether it's a woman who lost it or the coin uh, was hit by something. But whatever it is, it got lost. And the thing about life is that sometimes people just get lost. And you can't explain it. The lost sheep lost, got lost in the field. It went outside the field. But this coin was lost at home. It was at home. It wasn't far off. It is very sobering that sometimes people can be at home where we think they are safe and secure and still be lost. You can have a child at home and think, oh, uh, she goes to Sunday school, uh, she, she loves Jesus, we have devotion every morning, and, and we, we sing Christmas song, uh, Christian songs every time, we have praise and worship, pastors actually come to our home and pray, and you would think that your child, your daughter, your son is safe at home, and somehow you find He's lost. In that place of safety and security, something took the child away. Sometimes people we think are safe can be lost. And that's what this parable is talking about. The parable of the lost sheep went out rebellious, astray. You can say this is a bad sheep. But this is not a bad coin. It's at home. It's supposed to be safe, but it's lost. And if you've been a parent before, it's one of those scary things for every parent. When you think you're training your child the best way, raising your child the best way, and find that they are doing stuff you never train them. And you wonder, where did they learn it from? These days, there's an enemy that comes into our homes silently. It's called the internet. And it's taken away many children right from Christian homes. Like this coin lost at home. The second thing you note about where it was lost, not only was it lost at home, but it was lost in the dark. When nobody was watching in a dark place. Sometimes when you think you know, you realize you don't know. If you're a parent, you understand what I'm talking about. You think you know, and then you realize you don't know. There is a darkness in your home that you can't see clearly. There's a darkness around your family you can see clearly. Sometimes you think you know your husband so well, and then you realize there is a darkness you couldn't see. There is an aspect of his life you didn't know, and then your husband does something very terrible. And you wonder, what did I go wrong as a wife? Well, that's a lost coin. It was at home. They didn't go astray. Got lost at home. Sometimes you think your wife is the best. 
Ladies, you thought I was going to spare you. You think your wife is the best. Oh, I, I, I give her everything she wants. I take good care of her. Most of you brag. And then you realize something has gone terribly wrong. And you wonder, what went wrong? Well, it was at home. It was in the dark. Something you couldn't see envelope your loved one. What we need to learn from this parable is that sometimes right under our supervision we can lose people. Right under the best Christian training in your home you can still lose your children. And this one got lost in the dark. The question has been asked, what kind of data? Was it night time? I don't think it was night time. I think it was daytime. And the reason why I think it was daytime is that in the days of Jesus, in those days, in ancient times, people didn't have windows. Uh, most people didn't have windows in their house. Especially the poor. The house, it's, it's like... If you go to a lot of our villages, you find they build a hut and there's no window. Or if there's a window, it's a very tiny one. You even know, want to know why, why they put it there. But in the, those days of Jesus, there was no window. So you can be at home and still be in the dark. And there was no electricity. So it's likely she is in her room, but her room is dark. There's no light in the room. So... The coin got lost in the dark. And the third thing is that it got lost among either items. It wasn't an open room where a coin gets lost and you can find it. But there are other things in the room. Most of you have had the experience when... Maybe you were holding something in your hand, and this happened to me many times. You know, you're holding something in your hand, trying to work it, and then it, it gets off your hand, and you hear the sound that it fell here. And you look, and it's not there. Because after it fell, it rolled. And went to hide somewhere, and you can pull all kinds of, of tables and beds and chairs, trying to find something that just fell out of your hand. And that's what a lost coin is. You think you know how to find it, but you can't find it. Especially if you're a parent and you think, I know my son, I know my daughter, but you just can't seem to help them. You think you know where they fell, you think you know how to pick them up, you still can't find them. And this is what this parable is telling us. People who are lost at home. Friends, loved ones, surrounded by people but lost. They didn't go astray. They stayed and got lost. When you are young and you are inexperienced, you hear that somebody's child is bad. And you become very judgmental. They don't come from good homes. And this, that, that, that. But life will open your eyes. And you will realize you can be the most disciplined person. And yet a coin will be lost in your home. In your room. Right under your supervision. And if you are one of those who blames other people... May the Lord help you to have empathy and compassion. Because nobody seeks to have somebody they love lost. Lost to sin. Lost to bad habits. These days our young ones are getting lost. They are in the room lost to pornography. Lost to drugs. You will be shocked the amount of drugs... That your kids either are taking or seeing and contemplating whether they should take it or not. These days it comes in cookies. 
It comes in candies. It comes in different forms. Your child is chewing biscuit. And you say, oh, my child loves biscuit. Natural herbal biscuit. <laughs> it was lost. But thank God we can redeem the lost. So, how did this woman go about seeking for the lost coin? How do we seek for the lost at home? Children who are lost. We live with them, but they are lost. A spouse who is going astray. We live with him or her, but we can't seem to be able to help them. And we can learn from this woman how to do that. She did three things. And these are the details that you don't find in the parable of the lost sheep. The parable of the lost sheep simply says the man just went to search until he found, he found the sheep. But this one gives us three specific action points. First is that she lit a lamp. She lit a lamp. She turned on the light. That tells us she was searching in the dark. It was a dark place and she turned on the light. You cannot find what is lost until you find light. Until you get clarity. And for us Christians, what does it mean for us? It means that we must be guided by God's word and God's spirit. Not by frustration and anger. But God's word and God's spirit. Sometimes your frustration and your anger can drive the coin further away. It's time to get into the word of God. It's time to, to pray and be sensitive to the spirit of God. It's time to have light, the light of God. We must walk in the light of God's word. That means we ourselves trying to seek for the lost must be in alignment with the word of God. Because if you are a father and your children know you are immoral, but you're trying to correct their immorality, then you yourself, trying to redeem the lost, are in the dark. You've not turned on the light. Fathers, your children know you chase girls. They know it. But you're trying to discipline them. You are in the dark. You need to turn on the light. So you can see yourself clearly. And you can see them better. That's what the woman did. She turned on the light. She herself needed clarity. And the coin also needed to be found. But it starts by she aligning herself with light. If we want to touch those who are lost at home, we have to be in the light. We have to open our, heart, our eyes clearly. Second thing she did, she swept the house. She had to use the help of a broom. The broom allowed her to reach to places that she couldn't reach naturally by herself. What does that mean for us? Don't hide or turn away from the truth. The purpose of the, of the broom is to get things out of their hidden places. Parents, it doesn't serve any purpose for you to praise and protect and defend your children when they are horrible. Get the broom. Bring everything out. Face the truth. Face the reality. You may think it will mean that people will say you are a bad parent. It doesn't mean that. It simply means life happens to people. Life happens. But don't be in denial. Bring out the broom. Sweep it. Lady. Don't say, oh, my husband has gone on track. You know he didn't go on a track. Get the broom out. Bring things to the open. 
Don't hide anything. Don't hide facts. Don't hide the truth. If we're going to help people, we have to face the truth. We have to get the light on. We have to get the broom out. Sometimes it means having very difficult conversations. Conversations that are difficult because there's a lot of anger in the conversation. But it has to be had. And please, if you are lost and they bring you out with a broom into the light, don't get angry. <laughs> don't say, who are you? You are now, you are following me. Everywhere you go, I go, you are following me. You are following me. Why? 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 Are you my mother? Coins that are lost don't talk that way. <laughs> Just keep quiet and come out, come out, come out from wherever you are so that the light will be shining. Because the whole process is not to dishonor, to disgrace you. The whole process is to bring you back in alignment with God and the purposes of God and the plan of God. It's not about humiliation. It's about redemption. She swept the house. Finally, third thing she did. The Bible says she searched carefully. She had to search. And I, I wonder, what was she doing? You have brought out, you've swept your room, but you have to search carefully through the things you have brought out by the broom. Look for and encourage true repentance. Because sometimes people who need Christ can show up with deception. False repentance. Oh, I'm sorry, but he's not sorry. Oh, I won't do it again, but he'll do it again. If they've been raised in church, they will say all the right things. Most of you parents easily get deceived by your children. You know, sometimes I wonder why parents forget how they were when they were children. And your children are playing the same games you played on your parents, and you are none the smarter. Because your child is still on drugs and still sitting at, sitting at, the, at, the, at, the, at the morning devotion and blasting in tongues. But he's still <laughs> eating the cookies, the herbal cookies. But he's still blasting in tongues and, and singing and hallelujah. And if you are not careful, they'll even prophesy to you at the morning devotion. But nothing has changed. You have to search carefully. Don't take appearances. Don't be deceived by appearances. Go deeper. That's what the woman was doing. Because sometimes you can see a shiny thing thinking it's your coin, but it is cigarette wrapper. <laughs> you have to search. You have to search until you find the genuine coin. And that's what Jesus is teaching us in this year of gathering. For some of us, we have to gather lost people in our homes. Our children must come back to God. Our wife must come back to God. Our husband must come back to God. Our friend must come back to God. Our cousin must come back to God. They are all at home with us. But you and I know... They are lost. They've gone somewhere. Not far away. They seem to be around, but they are lost. May the Lord help us as we seek to find our lost coins. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>